So in this session we'll continue with frame assembly. Now if you've decided to wire your frames, the next step is to install the eyelets in the end bars before you assemble them. Uh, one thing you're going to want to take note of, some manufacturers, they bevel one side of the end bar, as you can see here, and they leave the other side flat. And what that does, it when you get a bevel against the flat, it leaves a nice groove that you can get your hive tool in. When the frames are in the hive and the bees uh, glue them all together, you can easily spread them, break them apart with, with the hive tool. So what you're going to want to do is if your end bars are beveled, you're going to want to pick yourself and define a standard for yourself. Either have all the bevels to the right or all the bevels to the left when you install your eyelets. And what that does, once you get the frame assembled, it'll guarantee no matter which way you flip the frame in the hive that you end up with a bevel against a flat versus if you just randomly put the eyelets in you're going to end up some that are flat against flat and some bevel against bevel. It doesn't really matter but you're not taking fully advantage of the bevel versus flat. Now the end bars that we're going to be using aren't beveled, they're flat on both sides so it doesn't matter uh, which side you put them in. Now the eyelets themselves, depending upon which catalog you buy them from, sometimes you'll get brass, sometimes you'll get zinc coated, um, it really doesn't matter. And then there's a tool you buy for a couple bucks, it's a steel rod that's been machined on one end that the eyelets fit onto and help you align them up with the holes to, to set them into the end bars. Now to do that, you just take your eyelet and there's a rim on one side of them, you put the rim on the tool first and then you just line the tool up with the hole in the end bar give it a whack with the hammer pull the tool off and then you want to do the same for the rest of the end bar now a deep end bar has four holes for wires and a medium has three holes for wires and you're going to want to do all your end bars that you're going to assemble so here we have an end bar that's completed with the, with the four eyelets in so for this, uh, we're going to do 10 frames, so I'm going to continue and put the eyelets into 20 end bars. Okay, there we go. We have our 20 end bars with the eyelets in place. Now on to assembling. If you're a hobbyist with just a couple hives, assembling by hand without a jig is probably the easiest, uh, using nails and glue. Um, if you have an air compressor and have an uh, air stapler, that also works. We'll get into that a little bit later with jigs and, and setup. But the first thing you're going to want to do is when you buy your frames, uh, most of the manufacturers have stopped shipping nails. It used to be when you buy your frames it included nails, but since so many people are going to air uh, staples, they stop shipping the nails. But you'll get only two size nails. You need the smaller nails for the bottom bar, and then some longer, larger nails for the top bar. So I did an extra frame here. Let's assemble a split rail split bottom rail frame uh, with the wedge top bar. We broke the top wedge out already. It doesn't matter if you haven't broke them out, you can leave them in. This one I broke out earlier just to show you. We can put it back in later. So the one thing you have to keep in mind is your eyelets need to go on the outside of the frame. So it's important when you assemble the frame to make sure they stay in the proper position. Otherwise you get your frame assembled, you go to run the wire and you find out the eyelets are on the inside. And it's like, uh oh. Okay, so the first thing you want to do um, I recommend using glue, especially if you're a beginner and you have the time, you're not going to have too many hives. The added strength of the glue helps a lot. There's nothing worse than when you grab on trying to pry, pry out a frame that's full of honey and the top bar comes and the sides and the wax and everything stay behind. So you want to uh, use the glue. I use white glue. You can use uh, polyurethane glue. Now it used to be the quality of frames were questionable. Uh, not as good as they are today's day and time, so it was recommended that you'd soak the end bars and the wood in water to soften them up so you didn't split them. Uh, I stopped doing that years ago. Uh, with the quality of the frames you're getting today with most manufacturers, if you're splitting more than 1%, um, 
you have an issue and I switch with, with to to a different uh, vendor, because uh, um, you shouldn't have that problem anymore. Like I said, I can't remember the last time I split a frame. So I just apply a dab of glue on the end bar, making sure that the eyelets are on the outside, and just press it onto the top bar. And then we'll do the same with the other side. A little dab of glue. Eyelets on the outside. Push it down. Now for the bottom bars, I'll just put a little dab of glue in the cracks. Like so. And then line up the split rail on this side. You don't have to get them. You don't have to worry about getting them set in correct position right at this moment. Just get them started in the in the uh, grooves. Okay. Now I'll turn it over. It's good to use a, a small tack hammer when you're going to nail the frames. Just give it a tap on the top. Now I like to put two two nails in each each end. I use the longer nails on top. As you can tell, I haven't nailed frames in a while. Uh, I've gone to the air staples. But once you get going, it comes back to you rather quickly. The air stapler is uh, much quicker and less, less bending of nails. Once you get the top rail nailed in, turn it over. Now you can just tap and line up the, the bottom rails to the edge of the, the bar. And now we're going to use the smaller nails here. A little bit of glue running out doesn't, doesn't hurt anything. It'll dry and it'll make no difference at all. I'd rather have a little extra glue than not enough. And here we put a little nail in each of the, each of the bottom rails. Turn it around, line up this side, get it nice and flush. Two more small nails. And there, the frame is assembled. Not quite. Now what you're going to want to do is put the two most important nails in the frame. And that is through the end bar and into the top bar this way. That gives you added strength when you pull up on the top bar. You're pulling against that nail and that holds it in. Whereas in two nails you just drove in through the top. When you pull up on the top bar you're just basically pulling them out. So you're going to want to put a nail in through the side. And if you're using the split, the wedge top bar, you're going to want to make sure it goes into the side without the wedge. And you're just going to... So just like that there. I know you can't see it right now, but trust me, I'll show you in a minute. See, just like that, you're going to want to put one in both sides. And then once you get those two nails in, be done. There's your second one and there's your frame fully assembled. Let it dry and it'll be really strong. We've run out of time for this segment. Next time we'll talk about assembly jigs and using air staplers.